the showcase of the hackathon. In the, during the pre-conference, there was a two-day hackathon where developers on uh, software within the Wikimedia universe and people that aspire to work on it uh, come together and um, have conversations and do actual work. I'll just, is this better? Um, and um, um, yeah, it's, uh, uh, f f I think, for the third or fourth year now that we do um, two-minute presentations um, uh, during a one-hour time slot in the main conference so that um, in understandable language, hopefully, developers will uh, inform also non-technical people of uh, what is being accomplished here and why the heck are we together eating pizza in a room for two days. Um, we have 17 presentations, um, so at the moment we expect to have about 45 minutes of content for you, which is well within our uh, available time. Um, and I would like to invite, um, because we could not find Seddon, um, Adam and Orlego on stage. Yeah, if your session is about to be up, make sure that you're in the front of the room so that the switches go quickly. Uh, hello, uh, I'm Lego. Um, Adam. Uh, hello. Okay. Um, the the project Adam and I worked on is for the Linter extension. So if you're not familiar with it, um, the Linter extension was designed to identify errors in wiki text. So we want to progressively like remove a bunch of the edge cases and historical accidents that exist in wiki text to make it a standardized language that works for both humans and the parser. Um, so throughout that, we've been cleaning up some edge cases. And so the linter extension, what it does is it identifies um, the, these kinds of edge cases that we want to break in the future. Um, and then it goes through every wiki and it creates lists of articles that editors can go through and fix. Um, so one of the things, and this was deployed about a year or two years ago. And one of the things I'd wanted to do at the time was like show editors how much progress they'd been making. Um, so we had been recording stats for the past two years on how many errors were left, you know, like every day. Um, but it was just going into this black box and it was never exposed. But so now um, what Adam did and, and me um, was we created a graph. So now once the patch gets merged and deployed, there will be a chart showing um, editors' progress of how many errors they cleaned up. So this is the CEB Wikipedia. Um, that's where the data is from. And it was, there's an error where table tags should, are like nested in the wrong way, so they get deleted. And Adam is going to explain how we did it. Wait, how we did what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so uh, I actually don't know that bit. Yeah, but how does it get there? Um, he, d he does know how it works. He's just tired. Um, e every time, like or every like 500 edits, we save the the number of um, we save the number of errors that are existent in the system called Statsity, which is just uh, it measures counts over time, and so then it pulls it over the API and then turns it into a beautiful graph. Thank you. Uh, Ursula, are you in the room? Celestine. Uh -oh. Is it option command? How do you make a new incognito? New tab? Yeah, or no, incognito. Yeah, this this is already incognito. Oh, it is? Oh, okay. Yeah. That works. Thank you. All right, everybody. I'm going to show you a few. My name is Aaron Hanfaker. I'm a researcher at the Wikimedia Foundation. I run this machine learning team. I'm going to be showing you some, uh, some gadgets that I made that show off some of the things that we've been doing with machine learning. And as I do, when I do these things, I'm logging in with my, uh, my account. And so I'm going to ask, are there any uh, Wikipedia administrators in the room? I can't see you raising your hand. I'm just going to assume that people are. Uh, are there any, any administrators in the room who have not enabled two-factor authentication? Just let, yell loudly. Ah, uh, shame. I saw at least one hand. And so you really should. It helps you deal with situations like this, where Sebrin might steal my password, and he won't be able to get into my account because I have secret numbers that get generated. Come on. Oh my gosh, it worked the first time. OK, let me get these open. Is it, 
is control option in Max? How does this work again? Control click? No. New tab. Option click? Uh, option T. Yeah, option click. Whoa, what is this? Sorry, I only use open source software. This is super weird. <laughs> Uh, option click. There we go. Okay, so three gadgets. One of them I'm going to show you. I made this one actually for Rosie Step. Rosie Step uh, told me that she was using our article quality model to see how she was improving the, artic the quality of articles in Wikipedia, and it was a pain in the ass because you had to go back to our machine learning tool in order to uh, do stuff with this, and maybe, how do you make it bigger? 30 seconds. Oh, come on. <laughs> how does this work? <laughs> option plus. Option Option plus is not working. Option shift plus? That's, that's command. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, what this does is it takes our article quality predictions and it sticks it on okay, the side of Okay, you get 15 seconds pages. extra. And so you can like scroll maybe if Max can do that. Um, nope, they can't. So we're moving on to the next one, which is in Basque Wikipedia, they asked me, oh, we're really gonna need to scroll for this one. Uh, maybe I can just go to the section, there we go. In Basque Wikipedia, they asked me if I could uh, have our, our article quality predictions there show up on lists of articles, and so these article quality uh, assessments that are actually to the left of these links are actually coming from our ORS prediction model. And of course, it wouldn't be complete if I didn't also have the ORS prediction model throwing article quality predictions on the top of articles there. So nobody really actually has to go through all these articles in Basque Wikipedia labeling things. ORS can make some predictions, and that'll help people find the important things to work on that are low quality. Thank you, Aaron. Next time, try to say less. <laughs> um, next would be Rogue Assassin 123 or Medea 7. Ah, okay. Increase the volume of uh, the audio of the computer. I th yeah, I think, it's sh uh, I think it's been made to work. Okay, so uh, being born in the YouTube age, uh, I like to consume my information through videos. And as you all know, Wikipedia is predominantly a text-based encyclopedia. So the goal of building VideoWiki was to visualize the sum of all human knowledge. Uh, just to show you why VideoWiki is awesome and what insights it can give, it, give to you is, okay. Elon Reed Musk. Born June 28, 1971. Is a business Okay, so if you see the equivalent Wikipedia article, uh, if you go to his early childhood, where's early childhood? Yep. This is one very interesting line here which says, uh, at the, yep, he taught himself computer programming at the age, uh, himself computer programming at the age of 12, sold the code of a basic based video game he created called Blaster to a magazine called PC and Office Tech for approximately $500. Now it's a very simple line, easy to comprehend. Uh, Elon Musk uh, created a game called Blaster and he sold it for $500. But the same line, if you read it in uh, Wikipedia, uh, Video Wiki, uh, it looks something like this. Early childhood. Uh, I'm just getting there. So this is the actual game which uh, Elon Musk has created. So in the 1980s, so you actually get to see the game which he created, and this is the kind of perspective what you see in Video Wiki. So that's what Video Wiki is all about. You can it's live on VideoWiki.org. You can play around with it. And one big thing about uh, video uh, any video editing website is that it's uh, the editor has something known as a timeline feature. YouTube editor, any editor which makes editing really hard and complex. But when your mission is, oh, sorry, when your mission is that anyone can uh, edit the sum of all human knowledge, uh, your learning curve should be really small. So if you want to edit this uh, Your image, time is up. Oh yeah, you can just drag and drop it. Thank you. Uh, Sadden, you're next. Um, yeah, I think you have to go back, back, back. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you can't see anyone in the room. Uh, you're probably the first one. Yeah. After done. Hey, everyone. So, um, 
one of the things, given that uh, a lot of our traffic is going to mobile, and especially for Wikivoyage, it's uh, a mobile site. This is the current state of the uh, mobile main page on Wikivoyage. Um, so I've been working to do a redesign so that we can actually A-B test the designs of a mobile main page. Um, and so this is the new mobile main page. Um, it's got uh, a box that basically takes you to the search function that's been stolen from some of the work that uh, engineers have been doing on the Hindi Wikipedia. Um, and come on, go faster, thank you. Um, and the carousel's been redone, so we've taken uh, the bootstrap carousel that's uh, done by GitHub, um, so that works much better on mobile. Um, and yeah, everything's tried to kind of be kept roughly in style with um, UI and stuff like that. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Thank you, Sedan. Uh, then we have Medea 7 on the pay gap in... You cannot use your own laptop. You... Yes, you can use that. Next time, close all the windows. <laughs> this, this will be kept for eternity in the, in the live stream. And Um, I'm a presenting a project, I still work on it, and it's about the, the pay gap in Germany, so how men and women earn differently. The idea was to make a play, a game, so it starts here, and you can relate what somebody earns regarding to the profession, so you can move cards like this. When it's right, when it's right, it stops. Yeah, and then you can do it again, or you can move to the next step. So, I'm not going through all of that, I just show the last one, because also you can log in and then decide what you think would be good, so it's, it has a login button, and then you can select how would you make it. If you would be um, the director of a city, how would you, how would you um, give the money to what profession and to what people? So with that, it's possible to collect data. So, and I thought, but this is just at the beginning, I thought it would be good to do this with Wikidata to really collect data from professions and then to see how can we improve that because in that sense, it's also political to change the situation of different professions because the topic concerns not only women, it also concerns men because in a lot of professions where women work, um, the payment is very bad, so also the men who work in that profession are paid very bad. And by making this visible, um, it's possible to change the situation. Okay, so um, I, I put the website on the, fabric on the side today, um, so if you have more questions, please come and ask me. <laughs> for now. Thank you. Thank you. Next is uh, Lina on clustering comments categories. You still know the password? So, um, for anyone who ever edited comments, you know that it's complicated to maintain um, good categories because you have um, several uh, upstream of images. It can be from um, glam partnerships or people visiting museum. So you end up with things like that where you have several images for the same app, for the same artwork. So my idea was, how oh, can we regroup them under one category that is going to be linked to the item of Wikidata? So I first use, um, I'm going to sh show you. So the first idea is that the information on comments is always going to be um, 
fuzzy. So we will we'll not be able to rely on just machine analysis. We are going to always need um, human control. So um, how do you copy past on this? Um. Command, I think, was it command? Yeah, command C okay. and command V. So, uh, okay, I can just tap it. <laughs> it's going to, um, okay. So, we're, I'm going to load the data from command since I already did it in cache, it's going to be more quick than what is used. As usual, so we have this interface where there is a part of clustering that is already done. 30 I can seconds. say that this is not a right image, so I can move it on the side, and then, yeah, let's say that there are three images that are from the same artwork, so I move everything here. And now I have two clusters that are represent two, uh, two artworks, and I can put it all on commons and on Wikidata. It's going to be, uh, take us a while, so I'm just going to show you the end result is something like that, where you have a gallery for a category, which with each subcategory being an artwork, and if you go to see the category of the artwork, there's all the categories of the images that are stored in the same Your place. Your time is up, I'm And sorry. there is also the Wikidata item with information that is there. Uh, we're looking for Eugene, who worked together with James Hare. Are they here? Any of them? Uh, Dutch keyboard, yeah, kind of. Where did the browser go? No, it's closed. Why? Sorry. Is the, is it in either? Is your no, I don't think ah, okay? Hello. Um, I'm Ed Sanders. I'm the lead developer of Visual Editor, and as is tradition, we like to present our collab pad at every hackathon because we slowly work on it in our spare time. And so between each hackathon, not a lot changes, but um, we are getting close to the point where we reckon we'll be able to deploy something for people to um, play around with in public. So um, this is what it looks like. And then someone in a secret location can join the pad. Oh look, there's Rowan. Oh look, he's typing. He could be miles away. He's actually in the corner there, crouched down. Um, as it's a hackathon, I thought I'd add some more features, so I added this checklist feature, so you can do checklists whilst you're on your... Oh, look, Rowan just unchecked something. Wait, no, we've got to check that now, because that's done. Um, yeah, so we're getting close. Oh, look, we've got two people on the document now, and I can type as well. Um, we have a, a project page. Please click on that. We had a session yeah, yesterday or Friday, I can't remember, uh, where we had lots of great ideas about use cases for this one of which was to take this completely offline so you know kids in um, townships can like play around and learn how to edit Wikipedia in a much more fun environment. I mean, we're having fun and we're supposed to be grown adults, so. Um, but also just, uh, <laughs> um, also we're having a meetup at 6 p.m. in, and I've forgotten the name of the room. 30 Check seconds. It's Cino Lario. So come join us for our meetup and talk about what features you like to see or where you'd like to see it deployed or, um, Yes, all sorts of great things. How much time have I got? 15. I'll do it with us. <laughs> Look how many people have joined. Dragons, oh my god. All right, someone else can have my time, because I'm now just pissed them out. Thanks, Ed. Uh, a few people registered, but we cannot locate them. Tony Thomas, we're looking for you. Um, Andra, uh, then you're up. Be the wrong one. Would 
que meia. I should have bookmarked this. D, D, D. That looks about right. Okay, then there's still something wrong. Yes. Of course. Ah. No, no, the clock is not running, so don't worry. <laughs> Dash. H. <laughs> Who thought of this naming scheme, did we? <laughs> At least we got it. New beginning in two minutes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. A um, bit of history. Three years ago, we loaded the complete disease ontology into Wikidata. The reason is we're trying to combine biomedical data in different contexts, and the disease ontology is one of the backbones of loading different medical and biological resources and to, answer, to do research. When we uh, loaded um, the disease ontology in Wikidata, there was a, a surprising uh, effect. We had suddenly, it's an on, English only ontology, suddenly we had on average eight translations for all, um, all Wikipedia uh, of all diseases in disease ontology. So at the hackathon, I thought about how is it with translations in all the, uh, not, I learned that they're not all, but 10 of the 11 South African languages, and here you see the distribution there is actually only one disease being translated into all, uh, into all the languages covered on Wikipedia. So what I did is, first at the hackathon wrote this query, and give me a second, because it might take some time to run, and then share the tweet that you just said and ask the whole community, please add your, if there are empty blocks in your ter in the term, try to add some uh, results. Um, reached out to, to the chapter, the local chapter, and they gained some terms. So during the hackathon, we have increased the numbers uh, quite a bit. There's still seconds. only one 10. So I was hoping at the end of Wikipedia, of Wikimania, let's make more than 10. But as you can see, there are more fives, more fours, and more sixes. That was it. So please, let's get to the 10 before the Wikimedia ends. Thank you. Thank you, Andra. Uh, Aaron, Aaron Ross is next. Hi, I'm Iran, I, I'm Iran Rose. I'm a, I edited the, the template wizard. It's a new extension and added there some uh, wiki data features. So I have two goals here. One, to let editors in Wikipedia access to wiki data more easily when they edit, edit box, info boxes. And the secret goal is to have a declarative mapping between uh, template parameters and wiki data properties. So I will show you how template wizard uh, looks like. Uh, so it adds a new button in the, uh, in the editing. So you can uh, add a new info box or other templates. Uh, it opens a dialog where you can uh, fill up the parameters of the template. Uh, this is the template wizard with no uh, Wikidata. Now I want to add Wikidata. So we add to the template data a declarative mapping between the property in Wikidata to parameters in the template. Uh, we do it only once for the template. 
And then when someone uh, adds the template to a new page, uh, it indicates that the parameters comes from Wikidata, and you can see the, the data that comes from Wikidata. You can also click on the Wikidata icon to edit uh, the parameter uh, directly in Wikidata. Uh, that's it. You can see the fabricator task if you have any suggestions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, C. Scott, yeah. Next is C. Scott. That would be this one. Yeah. We full screen it. Yeah. I'll like stop and start. Can't quite tell, but yeah, okay, great. Um, so in May 2017, I attended a, an annotations conference, and uh, one of the conference attendees, a UX designer from NPR, uh, contributed this design for um, structured image annotations. Um, this first image shows. Uh, we're going to go left to right. Shows how uh, Commons looks now. Um, and the second image just this demonstrates mobile aware design and that every annotation has a minimum target size, which isn't strictly related to this hackathon. Um, this shows when you actually go to add an annotation, uh, you initially get a plain text box, uh, much like you do now. But the cool part is when you start to type, you get a Wikidata drop down. And so that's not just a cathedral, it's Q43282 with a bunch of metadata, including translations into every language. Um, and then when you select it, it, it describes the relationship. You also see that the cathedral says place, um, uh, so it, it describes some additional hints as to what it is. So this is what I actually did. In previous hackathons, I actually implemented all the back-end stuff that makes uh, this, this uh, generate nice W3C standard annotations, but none of it was visible. So now I finally did a little bit of visible stuff. It still kind of looks crappy, but you can actually see it this time. Um, so um, you had the final file annotation. Is this playing? Yes. Um, and you know, yes, this UI sucks, but it actually sort of works. Um, and uh, yeah, it's very slowly pick it. Um, again, when you type, it uh, displays an entity, so that's Q42, and then you pick uh, a type. So this isn't just an image, it's an image of the grave. You save it, and wow, that's a Wikidata statement which is structured and machine readable and all sorts of wonderful things. Uh, one minor little fun thing that I discovered, the cathedral, I'd like to say it's a place or a building, but my choices were cathedral or church, or Ethan North Church, which is a little too specific. I added building, we'll see how long that lasts. Douglas Adams, I can only describe him as human, um, which seems a little bot-like. Um, I'd like to say he's a person, but uh, it's locked, so I can't, so we'll see. Okay, thanks. Great timing, thank you. <laughs> Next is uh, Kunal, on, on the way to plus two. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, so one of the things I'd been talking with different people was um, um, about um, onboarding and mentoring new people, and I was talking with Rowan, and Rowan pointed out that we have great um, like mentorship and outreach programs for new contributors, but for contributors who are in the middle, we don't really have anything that great. Um, and these are the people who, you know, maybe aren't maintainers yet, but they're kind of still in the middle, like they've been submitting good patches, they've started doing a little bit of code review. Um, so what I did was I wrote a draft of a document called Road to Plus Two, and it's basically like I want it to be a guide of um, of like the things you should start doing, you know, like how to start reviewing code well, um, and like w areas that you can get involved in. Um, so that way people, you know, they have um, an avenue of like how they can move up. And as well, like at the bottom, um, there's like a work with a mentor section. So these are the people I've volunteered for this already. Um, and if you're interested, I'd love to see like people start editing this document um, as well as like signing up to mentor. So that way we can, um, you know, like start mentoring the people who are in the middle of the road. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we are looking for Angel Obrejon and Isara. Ah, okay, good. Hi, uh, this one. Okay, this is our bot. After the hackathon, the Barcelona hackathon, I finished my my bot. This one uh, only changed the I don't know here. For example, this one. This one is a person, is a human, is male, is country from Spain, and also um, occupation is journalist. Okay, then uh, the bot changed the description. 
in Spanish to say the Spanish journalist and the description in Spanish, please, uh, here. Hey. Where is the Spanish? Aquí, this is periodista español, this is in Spanish, but now only change in Spanish. Then uh, here I, I spoke with my friends in uh, Asturian, in Galician, in Basque also, but I need more language. Mm -hmm. Then if you can help me. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, is Sarah? Yeah. Okay, hi, I'm Asara. I was making terrible logos for people's projects on request, and um, well, here's one that somebody apparently is actually using. So the Wikibase registry is using that logo. There, see, they're using it. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> there were a bunch of others, so surprisingly few were actually requested this time, which meant I was able to catch up a bit on the backlog from last year. But, um, Parasoid, apparently I made one last year and forgot, so I made another one this year, and this is the new one. Uh, may or may not be used. I would hope to get a shirt with both of them on it, just because the previous one was hilarious. Uh, here's another one. It's, it probably needs a new name, but now they have a graphic to use for it, which is great. Yeah. But the best thing... Oh, here's another one that's uh, probably okay. Oh, no, that's awful. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. The best logo here is um, this one. It's a new logo for MediaWiki.org, and I intend to foist it upon everybody. Somehow. I'm not sure how. Um, in the meantime, we also have a very nice version of it that we can use for joke contexts. <laughs> Just because this seems slightly more accurate, there is also a version of this specific to skinning because, quite frankly, we need something to represent our um, front-end interfaces. And let's face it, MediaWiki is horrible, so it not actually being able to put its pants on seems slightly accurate considering we have no idea how to put skins on it. So, yeah. This is our future. Thank you for that. Adam, you're up. So following on from the terrible logo that we're using, um, the Wikibase registry, we haven't really done anything on it this hackathon other than create some new, um, add some more Wikibases to it. Uh, so if you know Wiki API-ery, or however you meant to say it, this is the Wikibase equivalent of it currently, and maybe my long-term plan over the next year is to merge the two. Um, yeah, and so we have this cool new logo. Um, in the run-up to Wikimania, we created two new Wikibases. And on the front page, there is a link that should work. And we'll take you to the query service for the Wikibase registry. You can run on this very simple query, and it will present to you this lovely timeline and if I scroll down, aha. Uh -huh. uh, in the bottom right hand corner, then you can see the two lovely Wikibases that we created uh, for people at Wikimania, and then also the Wikibase registry logo by Asara, and that's it. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> Next up is uh, Chase. Charles Matthews, are you here? Good. That's incredibly Thank bright. Uh, I don't have any visual cues, so imaginations only. Um, closing your eyes is optional. Uh, we deployed um, an anti-vandalism extension for Fabricator. Oh, all right, let me get closer. Uh, spam in Fabricator has been a big problem. Most people in this room probably know. Uh, Macunda Model has worked on an anti-vandalism extension, which is all private for now. Um, and I helped him deploy that, and we iterated on a bit. The heuristics for automated user blocking need work uh, because it forcibly logged out the wrong users pretty quickly. 
Um, but the one thing we wanted to socialize is there's a trusted contributors project uh, in Fabricator that's essentially whitelisted. And the story with that is if you're a member of trusted contributors, you can add others. And there's only like 200 some odd people in that group now. So we're hoping that that can kind of grow organically um, so that the potential for uh, adverse reactions is smaller. Um, and then along with that, we've been doing a lot more thinking about kind of cross-platform anti-vandalism uh, efforts. Right now we have a bunch of administrative tooling and we've had some bad actors who kind of go from one to the other, from Garrett to Fabricator to Wikitech. And a lot of times they're starting on the main wikis. Um, so I'd really like to talk to maybe some stewards, some more people about kind of collaboration and coordination, maybe tooling, maybe only social. But that's all. Thanks. Uh, next is, uh, yeah, Mr. Matthews. Dr. Matthews. <laughs> Hello. No, just look at the chart. Let me know if you need help. Right, I need a chart. Uh -huh. Wikidata. And I'm working on the focus list of um, science source projects, so that's WD dot science source focus list. Now, while I was here, and this is not tech, I decided to repurpose this from just not just the starting point of our science source style learning project, but actually to be a compact bibliography, open access biomedical literature that addresses the systematic biases of the well-known of the current medical literature. This systematic bias is very simple. Diseases of rich people in rich countries get more attention. Um, but in order to compile this list, we're using uh, P5008, focus list of a project. And um, what I did tech-wise is on the tech page, sorry, um, which is WT shortcut. Um, in order to add the statements that create the um, focus list, it's uh, just P5008 and then the P it's Q55 million something, which is the identifier for the Science Force project. So the fundamental text thing is this, papers, DOIs, digital object identifiers, if you could get them somewhere and if you could translate them into Q numbers uh, for the items on Wikidata, you'd have a list of Q numbers and then you could create statements, Q number P5008, Q55 million something, and you can put them in uh, quick statements and you get them tagged. So the big deal is translating from wherever you start to list of DOIs and then going forward that. So with the help of C. Scott, I understood that um, searching in the parsoid of, say, a Wikipedia article, you could identify DOIs easily. Then extract the identifiers, but there's a case issue here. I learned from James Hare that it should be all uppercase for Wikidata. 30 and seconds. So we, we get onto this type of Sparkle query that... Um, Alex say help me develop with a values statement, and then that will produce uh, what you want to go onto the um, quick statement stage. That is, it, it will get you the Q numbers you want. So uh, the rest is routine for quick statements people, and we have a batch input um, facility down this route, if not others, for our focus list. Thank you very much. Uh, well, uh, Jan, yeah, you're next. And uh, we have one submission that would be the last one, but it's currently incomplete. Uh, someone. Wiki Light? Okay. Can, can you at least add your name in the Etherpad? <laughs> Thanks. All right. This is a very small hack, but it's long due. In Sweden, you used to go to the Defense forces before you upload or publish an image that is taken from the air. And last summer that switched to the National Land Survey. So we had a couple of uh, templates that were handling this. And now we merged them both. And the user doesn't need to know uh, which authority. It just entered the approval ID and it shows the right logo. And now there's also uh, 14 exceptions where you don't need approval 
because the land survey thought this was too much to handle all the influx. So you can just add what you claim to be the approval and it will show up neatly. And there are also some error handling, like if you try to add an approval ID and an exception at the same time. So easier for publishing images for, from the air from Sweden. Thank you. And uh, last presentation. Sure, you speak in the microphone. This one you want to open? No, it's the camera. Yeah. Yeah. Wikilize is a search engine uh, which displays uh, Wikipedia articles. Uh, for low internet resource people. Uh, uh, it's, it display only text information and there is no cross links and it's a prototype project and now. Uh, if somebody got any real interest then I can move forward that thing. I'll just demo you. Uh, if you type it's Cape Town. Yeah, the whole thing will came from Cape Town. If you move over the cursor, then you will have a small description there. And the whole uh, thing is designed in a way that uh, it will load as low as possible. And um, if you put this thing and go for the search, it will give you the result from English Wikipedia. If you click the read more, you will get the Cape Town article without any image. It is very useful for low internet people. Uh, so that's it. Okay. Thank you. Okay, um, that was the showcase. Um, I have some uh, some closing notes. Um, we have uh, the Etherpad, and the uh, Etherpad of the contents uh, the, e the contents of the Etherpad will be updated in the fabricator task for the hackathon. Um, uh, this was. Um, the hackathon of uh, Wikimania. Um, the next hackathon uh, will be in Prague in May 2019. Uh, and of course, next year at Wikimania in Sweden, uh, in Stockholm, there will be another uh, hackathon. And uh, um, everyone who is interested in uh, joining the Wikimedia developer uh, community is, is welcome uh, at, at, at uh, any of these events. Uh, if you want to get involved in Wikimedia technology, uh, please go to mediawiki.org. Uh, we have uh, made a lot of effort to make our development uh, a developer portal um, uh, a lot better than it was. Um, uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, we like a big crowd. Next year we would like to have um, yeah, too few seats for uh, the people interested. Uh, full house is, the f is, is what we still have to accomplish for this uh, showcase. Uh, if you liked it, please uh, tell everyone that they should be here, um, and uh, that's it. Until next year, bye-bye. <laughs>